happy pongal happy sankranti happy so many other festivals i am amazed at the number of festivals that converge on this date all over the country shows the unity and the diversity of our nation right okay so here we are on this very sensitive topic that is overcoming regrets or guilt about what i have done in the past the very fact that those of you who have logged on to this is an indicator that you are a sensitive person you are a person who cares for others you are a person who wants to ensure that you do good in life and that you connect better with uh, uh, people so i really want to congratulate you that today you, despite being festival and you may have had so many other commitments you have logged in today or even those who are going to log in later and see after the program is over i really congratulate you because on the one side there are these innumerable uh, people who think they can do no wrong they always think only about themselves even when somebody points out something and says you know you have not done this correct this is not the way you should have behaved they justify themselves they feel that i cannot do anything wrong whatever i am doing whatever i am saying is correct contrast it to that those of us who are sensitive enough to from time to time stop think introspect have i done something wrong have i hurt somebody have i hurt somebody even unintentionally i wanted to do good but the other person got hurt or the other person felt upset even those things go a long way in ensuring that you lead a quality of life where ultimately you will not have many regrets you will not you will be able to look back at your life regardless of what you have achieved whether you become a big shot ceo or millionaire or not but you would definitely feel that yes there is something worthwhile that i have done in my uh, life they say that uh, every saint you know has a past and every sinner has a future you heard of that proverb i like it every saint has a past and every sinner has a future just because somebody is saintly now and somebody is behaving in a very nice manner it does not mean that he has not done bad things in life that's the first part of it and the second part equally important is that every sinner has a future that means even if i have done a lot of horrible uh, things i still have my life remaining and as long as i have even one day of life remaining i can do something to improve uh, uh, on it okay let's start off with understanding the basic premise that there is no life without regrets at least to sensitive caring compassionate people there is no life uh, you know without uh, uh, regrets we inevitably have you know some form of regret about something that we have uh, done so that's what i'm going to be discussing uh, uh, with you i just uh, uh, was reading the other day a very nice quote by no less than mahatma gandhi who uh, said that freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes said gandhi ji we are human we make mistakes we inevitably get into something or the other and when we feel that we are wiser or when we look back upon it we say no this is not what i should have uh, uh, done okay now the thing is, uh, uh, is that the problem comes because sometimes we get bogged down by these regrets we start thinking that you know i should not have done this i should not have done that that is my area of concern uh, today that sometimes we may get so pulled down by certain things which happened in our life or some things which we did which we feel that i should not have done uh, this and when it starts affecting your today when your yesterday starts affecting your today we owe it to ourselves to do something about it you know i may be having certain relationships certain interactions certain quality of life today but if i am carrying the baggage of past 
things which I have done, the regrets or the guilt that I have about certain things which I have done in the uh, past. Then what happens is it prevents me from leading a normal life today. Instead of connecting and communicating and interacting at a very natural level with the people who are in my life today, I become overconscious. Sometimes I become suspicious. Sometimes I become very reticent. Sometimes I feel some guilt that, you know, will I make a mistake? Will I do something wrong? These are the type of things which, uh, you know, cause the uh, us to start thinking in a negative uh, manner. On top of that also, when we have these, uh, you know, continuous uh, uh, regrets and continuous thoughts of all the so-called bad things that I did earlier in my life, it pulls down my self-esteem. My basic even self-worth goes down. I start thinking that, you know, am I a good person? Am I a person worthy at all or not? That can be very dangerous. That can really affect me in a very, very bad uh, manner. To start with, I'd like to, you to separate out whenever you have a regret. First thing is I suggest that you list it down. You write down what are the areas where you have regrets. You'll be amazed as a counselor, I come across so many people who have regrets about what they did as children. When I was a child, I used to shout back at my mother. My mother did so much for me. She did such nice things for me. She was so loving, caring. But I was a very rebellious child. I used to shout at her. I used to back answer uh, her. And I'm feeling miserable about it. The funny thing is that your mother may not be feeling that way. But I carry those uh, uh, regrets because I am, as I said, no, a very sensitive person, a person who cares for others, a person who wants to be nice to others. That's my basic principle. So the more regrets you have, congratulate yourself because it shows what sort of a human being you are. You are a person who cares for others, to whom relationships are important. You want to ensure that you don't cause any harm to anybody else and you remain in a good uh, form with uh, uh, others. Despite that, whatever has happened has happened. You cannot turn the clock uh, back. So you have these uh, you know, regrets that I wish I could have done this better. I wish I did not do such and such a uh, thing. I wish I had not hurt somebody or did something uh, bad. No, those thoughts are there. And as you know, the clock cannot be turned back. So I cannot erase whatever has uh, uh, happened. But I can start off by putting those thoughts in order. How do I uh, do that? Even though it is a painful exercise, even though at times we feel but every time that I recollect that particular incident or that particular experience, I feel miserable uh, about it. I try to avoid it. No, that's not the right thing to do. Avoiding something of the past which you felt was not done correctly by you will only aggravate it. I mentioned it can pull down your self-esteem, it can make you feel guilty, it can spoil your relationships of today. So please don't do that. Don't try to run away from those regrets or guilt or whatever you're feeling about anything that you have done earlier in life. The time comes when it is better that you face it directly. And this is the right time to do it. If nothing else, with all these curfews and all that going on, we have a lot of time to sit and introspect. Use this time properly instead of just watching Netflix or doing some mundane things or playing some games. I would rather that we use this time to try to set things in order. Okay. So, list down right from your childhood. I told you, you know, sometimes some of us sensitive people even regret what we did in childhood. I used to be bad to my younger sister. I used to, you know, throw my weight around at her and bully her because I was bigger. 
Fair enough, you did it. Okay, you did it. Let's talk about it. Let's recall and bring it uh, out. I should have done studied harder than I could have got admission in this college and I could have taken up this profession and I didn't do it. I was uh, neglectful of my academics and therefore I did this, this. Okay, fair enough. Write it down. I had this, this, this. At times, you know, I felt jealous of somebody and therefore I behaved in a manner which I should not have behaved. In some way, I hurt somebody or prevented somebody's uh, uh, progress. Fair enough. Make a list. And this is not a list which you can make one day straight away and be done with it. You have to take your time and do it in a systematic manner. Starting from this weekend, every now and then open that uh, you know, notepad or the book wherever you have written it and see what you need to add to it. Slowly keep adding on uh, to it. Every time that you recollect, even if it is something small, but as long as the memory of that makes you feel upset, it is enough significance for you to work on it. So make that uh, uh, list over a period of time, one, two, three weeks. Once you have an exhaustive list, start marking out those which you did intentionally and those which you did unintentionally. I wanted good for somebody, so I did this, but the outcome was bad. Now, what is the significance of that? As long as your intentions are good, but things did not turn out that way. You cannot hold yourself responsible. Everybody makes mistakes. An accomplished uh, uh, surgeon, for example, may do a surgery with all the good intentions that if I do this, 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 the patient's uh, ailment will be uh, resolved. But in reality, the patient dies. Now, if that surgeon spends the rest of his life regretting that I should not have done the surgery in that way, you see how a beautiful life can uh, be wasted, how the talent capabilities or how he could have helped hundreds of other people in future goes down only because he gets caught in that guilt trap. Because I took that decision and I did it this way, that is why this uh, um, happened. So every time, you know, it can understand that it can be very debilitating and it can really hurt uh, very badly. I was told by a friend of mine who was a, a railway officer that there was this, uh, you know, engine driver in the railways who had an impeccable 30 year record. He was known as the top or the most efficient and the best and most committed engine driver that the Indian railways had. And for years and years, he did his duty meticulously. One fine day, which turned out later on was not his fault. There was an accident and many people died. Many people got injured. He went into such a severe depression that he just could not function. On top of that, as it happens, no, there was an inquiry and they filed charges against him because he was the engine driver. He was responsible for the uh, train. Before any outcome could come of that, he committed suicide. Later on, as I said, the inquiry showed that it wasn't his fault at all. And that is what makes things. And that is what I am trying to prevent by discussing these uh, issues. So as I always do, you know, you keep seeing only my face over here, but there are these wonderful people in uh, the Banjara team who all contribute to these Saturday sessions in various different ways. Today also Sonal and Anis both are here, uh, you know, contributing to this uh, uh, thing even though it is a holiday and they should have been with their uh, families enjoying the festival. But what I did was that I jotted down some points and I requested Sunita to convert them into some nice, interesting slides, because instead of seeing my face all the time, you can see some nice uh, audio visuals, you know, which can have a better impact on you. So let me start off by explaining to you that the past impacts the present and the future, as I was telling you. 
Okay. Now, since we can't change the past, we can focus on transforming the present moment and that inevitably will impact the future positively, isn't it? So let's start with doing that. How? Accept that you are human. That's what I told, no? That's what Gandhiji said. Freedom is also the freedom to make mistakes. And as I told you, your regret demonstrates that you care. Accept your responsibility. And that's what I said. Divide into two. Those which you did intentionally and those which you did not do intentionally. Yet it had a negative uh, impact. Then ask yourself. How am I benefiting from this self-hatred? I am regretting, I am feeling bad about myself, I am saying nasty things, I am saying what a fool I was, how stupid of me to have done that. But how is it benefiting by going on and on and on brooding over the past? What I want you to do is to consider what you really want. What do you want out of life? Simple happiness, love, acceptance, some small achievements here and there sense of belonging, even generosity. I would like to give to others. I would like to share with the, uh, others. Gratitude for all the good things that I had. Let us start focusing on that. I'm sure each one of you can make a long list of these things that I'm talking about. Catch the negative self-talk in action. Do you see those little cards? I can't do it. I am not worthy. I have to be perfect. I must never make a mistake. I am not good enough. Nobody loves me. Let me tell you that without even realizing, very often we come across these thoughts and they go on playing in your mind, replaying, replaying. So what I request you to do is to Catch this negative self-talk. Identify and eliminate what triggers those negative thoughts. Even today, something triggers those uh, uh, thoughts. If I make a small mistake, no, I suddenly start thinking of the bigger mistake which I had made uh, uh, earlier. So we catch those uh, negative thoughts, right? Practice deep breathing, positive imagery. Take time out. To regroup, rebuild your inner core. This has to be done now. You cannot do it tomorrow or next week or next year. Do it now. We can all do it. It's very simple. Ask yourself, how do my thoughts affect my feelings and behavior? You know, amazingly, starting from Gautam Buddha, going on to Norman Vincent Peale, who's been an amazing psychologist. Of course, Mahatma Gandhi, Lao Tzu, William Shakespeare, Miles Davis, of Steve Jobs, an icon for the younger generations, the great scientist Carl Sagan and Albert Einstein. All of these people recognized and propagated the power of thoughts. Now, it's up to you to make your thoughts work for you and not against you. That's why I said the negative thoughts will come. The painful, self-derogatory thoughts will come, but you have the power to make them change. Focus on the gratitude part of it. What are the good things that happen? I always recommend write a journal, uh, you know, diary for those of you who are deep into technology, use the notepad of your phone and click into uh, that. Something like, you know, write three things each day that you value and you appreciate. Spend more time and uh, energy thinking about the positive rather than the negative. And start moving into the future. Who am I? And how do I want to be? Embrace your positive qualities as you look towards the future. 
genuinely apologize. Sometimes when there is occasion, apologize to somebody whom you have hurt knowingly or inadvertently. Apologize, sir, to them. Nothing wrong with it. If that person is very nasty or that person is not available to you, apologize to that person in your own thoughts. And you say, I'm sorry, I let uh, uh, go. But most important is forgive yourself. Say sorry to yourself and say, yes, I did something which I should not have done, which had a negative impact. I'm sorry about it and I will move on in life. Then do something to learn something useful. Every time you pick up a small new skill, an idea, a hobby, a good positive habit, as you keep developing each one of these, you will see a transformation and a change in your uh, life. On a regular basis, look for something new. The mind has to be continuously occupied. These are some of the very basic, very simple tips that I gave you. At the same time, I want you to be aware of the uh, fact that if I am stuck, I am somehow feeling so guilty, so negative about myself that I am not able to break free. Try out all these 10 tips that I gave you. If none of them works, and you are stuck in one of the most debilitating emotion and that is guilt nothing uh, you know hurts as much as guilt it destroys you and it also affects very badly people around uh, you so guilt is something that you have to do among all the emotions that i keep talking about every now and then I emphasize on the fact that you must do something to overcome your uh, uh, guilt. So what I have done is I have listed down a few, again, very simple points as to how you can overcome or rather how you can heal this guilt. Guilt is such a painful thing. It's like having a wound inside your mind. So how do you do the healing? Very simple, very you know, day to day points. How vulnerable or disturbed you were when the incident occurred. Like I said, you were a small child and you kept fighting with your mother. So you were innocent. You were vulnerable. You can't be guilty about what you did at 5 years or 10 years of uh, uh, age. Or you were pushed against a wall. Start recollecting those things. It will help you to rationalize your thoughts. Was it entirely my fault? Was it somebody else who pushed me to it? Was the circumstances such? Was I left with no choice? When you introspect, sometimes you realize that while I was guilty, I was not fully at fault. Even that helps. Whether continuing with this guilt is helping you in any way, that's what I mentioned earlier also. How is this negative thinking helping me? What am I gaining by going on, you know, brooding over this? Don't I think that it's time for me to move on? And then, how would you have reacted if one of your loved ones had done the same thing? It's a wonderful, simple exercise. I did this, 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 about which I'm feeling guilty. Let me sit and close my eyes and say, instead of me, if my best friend, my sister, my loved one, somebody had done the same thing, would I condemn that person? Or would I excuse that person? So the point is, why can't I do this to myself? Draw up a balance sheet of your life, of the good and bad things you have done. You may think that you have done a lot of bad things because of which you are feeling guilty. But don't forget the good things that you have done. You also benefited so many people. You have made gestures. You have gone out of the way to help people. Make a balance sheet. Pluses, minuses. We are all human, right? An action plan to prevent recurrence 
and do good to the person. Let me get into the action mode, okay? Instead of brooding all the time and feeling guilty, let me see what I can do to prevent recurrence of something which is going to make me feel guilty. Let me move on to being nice. Let me move on to doing good uh, things, right? And your other good points, actions, so many small, small things that you have done. If possible, get a feedback from some of your near and dear. What are the good things do you think that I have done in my life? Can you please tell me? You'll be amazed at the number of things which people will tell you. Are you acting, uh, setting very harsh standards on yourself? You can't be perfect, no? None of us can be uh, perfect. Others sin too. Humans are vulnerable. No one is perfect. I've already told you this. And forgive yourself. You have to start off by forgiving yourself. The same way as you would forgive a loved one who has done something bad. You say this person is a good human being. The person has done something wrong. I'm willing to forgive. That is a simple way of working around this. Day in and day out, I come across situations, people you know, who do things and they get stuck in it. But if you make up your mind and if you say, I know that I have to overcome uh, this, I go back to remind you of the same proverb which says every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Today morning, Dr. Shirin sent me a very nice uh, uh, mail about the festival of Lahiri where you take out all your unwanted things and burn them and get rid of them. So that, you know, what in modern parlance they are calling minimalism. So what she suggested beautifully was that instead of just doing it with material things, why can't we do it with our thoughts also, our memories, negative memories, bad things that happened to us, bad things that I did to somebody uh, else. Can I put them in one nice bonfire and burn them, get rid of them? I've done it time and again. For example, I did it once when there was this set of girls, you know, whose classmate had committed suicide. I told them, each one of you write a message to that friend who is no more and give it to me. I will take it to my farm and my retreat called Manthan. And in the night when we have a campfire, I'm going to burn all these things that you have written. And in the smoke, that message will go to heaven and it will reach her. Every one of the children wrote. So many of them wrote about things for which they feel guilty, they feel upset, they have regrets. And when I told them that all this has gone to your friend who is in heaven and she will forgive you, now it's time for you to forgive yourself and move on. It worked to a great extent. I'm not saying that a miracle happens, but to a great extent it uh, works. And that is why I'm just giving that as an example to show you that we owe it to ourselves. We cannot set ultimate and perfect standard. We would not be human if uh, we did not make mistakes or we did not do anything which we regret. Taking all that into account, we can move on to doing such wonderful things. Life is there. COVID will come and COVID will go. First wave, second wave, third wave, 30th wave will come and go. But life goes on. And we need to work on, on a regular and on a daily basis improving our quality of uh, life. And for that, I am going to now look forward to having as I get every Saturday, some good, nice, you know, comments, questions, points to ponder over from you while I take my one minute break and I hand you over to Sonal, who will just quickly make one or two announcements and I will be back. Good morning, everyone. And uh, 
I'm here to speak about our webinar, which is coming up. It's really a wonderful, important webinar, actually, in today's world, where, you know, lots of youngsters believe that we, we are not going to get married. What's the use of marriage? They have all these questions. But at one point, even if you are thinking of, you know, staying ahead, want to stay together with someone. And later, if you think that, let me get married, there are lots of things that which you can, you know, get prepared with. With the kind of person I'm going to stay, how much do I know about him? How much do I know about the family? It's not about one single person you're getting married. It's a package, right? It's a family. It's a union of two families rather than union of two individuals. And uh, most of the time in our uh, culture, we spend a lot of time on, you know, for the arrangements for the day or looking at while choosing the person, whether how is the boy or a girl looking, what, uh, you know, her nose is, you know, flat or sharp or how good her eyes are or what kind of financial status she is holding. If you join this uh, workshop, you will understand what are the other important factors to understand while coming into this beautiful concept of union of families called marriage. Yeah. And also, uh, if you register today, you will you can avail an early bird offer. We do a lot of counseling sessions and counseling for lots of youngsters who want to understand what is this concept of marriage and they really go prepared with it. Simple, simple tips Ali gives and it really works wonders. It's my personal experience that I'm talking from because it has worked beautifully with my own daughter as well. Small little tips to understand the family and the boy whom you want or the girl because it's a lifelong decision that you're taking. It's not about the day that you're getting together. It's about the life that you're looking forward to. Yes, it's an important workshop. Please join in, call up our office, register yourself. You have today the beautiful early bird offer. Monday onwards also you will have the offer open, but it will be the charges will differ. That's about it. But you have the opportunity, grab it. Apart from that, we at Banjara give continuously free counseling. So please, 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 I would say, whenever you think that you are on a crossroad and don't know what to do and talk to people around and still stay confused, I would say, take up the phone, dial the number, call up Banjara and get going with your sessions. It may be, you know, it may be just you need someone who can just listen out to you. You may not even want somebody to, you know, give any kind of uh, return in that. Like you don't want any advice. Yes, counselor is the person. You want just somebody to listen, don't want any response also. Counselor is the person. Or I just don't want to speak anything, but I just want to see someone. Maybe after that, I'll feel good. Come over. You want a different environment because I hear Many times people come over for what we do as career counseling. Parents come, spend their whole day with their child and they come and they say, hey, this was such a positive environment. To tell you the fact, we do what we are doing every day, but the outsider comes and gets the feel of the positivity. So all these expect, uh, aspects are what are done at Banjara. And you all have that, you know, opportunity please use it because banjara is open for anybody we even do get calls from you know overseas let me tell you that we are open for anyone yes but our working hours definitely are between 9 30 to 5 30. so join this workshop preparing for marriage it may sound that what is there to prepare it you can even gift it to someone you know whom you think can benefit not only the counselors or the people working in this uh, area or 
you are looking out for someone but otherwise also you want to educate yourself or your loved ones you can still join the workshop yeah welcome and it's time for ali to get back Ah. You know something, as Sonal was talking to you, my thought went to the topic of next Saturday, particularly now that in Karnataka there has been a lockdown on weekends, we are getting more and more uh, uh, people, you know, who are participating in this Saturday webinars. So the next Saturday, I am going to talk about how to know whom to trust. And that made me think what Sonal was telling you right now. How do you select a life partner? How do you know whom to trust? How do you know that, yes, this would be the right person for me? Such an important decision of your life. And we do not give emphasis to it. And that is our simple you know, contribution towards better relationships, better quality of life, we do these things. Okay, Anjana is asking, Sonal, if we are married for 24 years, do you think this seminar will help? If you are married for 48 years also, Anjana, it will still help uh, uh, you because we are talking about this whole concept, this beautiful relationship, which I, I always keep emphasizing. A good marital relationship can take you into seventh heaven. And a bad marital relationship can take you into the depths of hell. So it's not just a question of, yes, primarily our focus is to either for those who are planning to get married or parents, counselors and people who are going to play a significant role in the process of somebody who is getting married. But nonetheless, understanding the basic concept of this very unique relationship is what we are going to be, uh, you know, uh, talking uh, uh, about. Anand says, thanks Ali for this eye-opener topic. I shall work on past guilt by making points about the same and going over it. Yes, forgiving self will be worth so that we live life without any regret or uh, guilt. Thanks Anand for sharing that. And this message which Anand has given, I think, should apply to all of us. Every one of us should at some time or the other and periodically. See, I have brought up this topic today. You will do a little bit of introspection. You'll see where you land up. And six months later, six years later, you will again have a past. You will again have done certain things which you are happy with, with you are fulfilled with, and you will have certain things which you are not very happy with. Sometimes it could be the, the cause can be somebody else, so you're angry with them. And that's where next Saturday's topic is going to come in. Whom can I trust and how do I trust? Even in marriage, for example, I have seen people go ahead and jump into a marital relationship without knowing how to form an opinion about somebody, what to do in terms of thinking what uh, can be uh, done. I was, in fact, uh, recollecting one Bollywood movie in which this person is guiding this young girl who is going and meeting, uh, you know, guys on uh, dates in coffee shop to select a partner. And she asks this person, you know, uh, what do I talk to him and how do I find out about his qualities? And he tells her, don't bother about how he talks to you because he'll really talk nicely to you. He'll put on the best front. When you are sitting in that coffee shop, see how he talks to the waiter. The waiter who comes and serves you, his tone, temperament, body language, demeanor with a person like a server will give you an idea of what sort of person he is. Starting from something as basic as that. And that will prevent us from again doing in future things which we will possibly regret uh, uh, about it. Vicky is asking, what uh, do you have to say about people who talk negative and are verbally abusive? Yes, that's a completely 
you know, exhaustive topic by um, itself. Because we need to work on it. I have been doing it and we will deal with it today since that's not a directly relevant thing. And I don't want to give, I never believe in giving quick fix answers, you know, do this and everything will be all right. Life is not as easy and as simple as that. So when I take up something, I would like to do justice, but I'll keep it in mind that I think it's been a long time since we have taken up something like, you know, how do you deal with people who are negative and verbally uh, abusive? So the flip side of it, we are talking today about regrets of what I have done. What about when I have been subjected to certain negative things by others? How do I deal with uh, that? That is also a very uh, thing. Gayatri rightly says premarital counseling is so necessary such a neglected area. I'm surprised that, you know, people don't even understand the significance of it. They can spend days, weeks, months in selecting the clothes or selecting the Kalyan Mantap or deciding whom to invite, but they are not willing to spend a few hours to understand how to prepare for a new relationship, how to ensure that I go in with the right expectations and to lay a foundation for a good uh, relationship. Raji says, I remember being harsh with my daughters when they were young. They are now abroad and I don't think they hold any grudge, but I often feel guilty about it. Should I message them and ask for forgiveness? Raji, what I suggest is you can start off by building a new relationship with your grown-up children at a friendly level. Don't straight away ask for forgiveness, but start with talking to them about what happened when they were young. How was our interaction? What are the good things you remember about me? What are the unpleasant things that you remember about me? And when this topic comes up that you were harsh at times, then you say, first you tell them why you were harsh because your intention was good. Obviously, you did not want to persecute or put down your children, isn't it? So explain to them what your intention was. At the same time, tell them that this is one role which I played, the role of a mother for which I did not have any qualifications, any training, any certification. So I did it by trial and error. And in retrospect, today, I think that I have been harsh on you. What do you think about it? If they have some memories and if they say, yes, ma, there are times when you did that and I used to wonder why you are being so strict or why you are scolding us so much. That is when you can ask for forgiveness and uh, move on, right? Okay, Surika is asking what is guilt complex? See, I feel guilty about doing something, right? But if it gets so ingrained into me that I start feeling guilty about not one thing, but five things, 10 things, 15 things. Every now and then, whatever I do, somewhere or the other, the guilt starts coming in. And that is what we define as a guilt complex. You know, like we have certain personality disorders, a person who cannot control his temper anytime. The same way there are people who go into what we define as a guilt complex, where a person for anything and everything, the first thought that comes is, am I guilty? Have I done something uh, wrong? Vicky says, uh, I made a mistake during my 22 to 24 years and I've evolved since then and thought how stupid I was. Is it common to make mistakes during your 22 or 24? Absolutely, Vicky. All of us have done that. Only difference is some of us admit it and regret it and brood over it. Some of us say, eh, what's so great? Yeah, okay, I did it. So what? And they move on. I'm glad you belong to the first category, that you are sensitive about it. And that is what really, you know, uh, helps. Surika says, how does one deal with guilt for wrong action done intentionally? Yes, as I said, there are many times when many of us have done something intentionally. I hated this person. I was angry with this person. I was jealous of this uh, person. I am human, Baba. I'm also allowed to make mistakes. I've done it. Yes, I've intentionally hurt this uh, uh, person. I can't be an angel all the time. So I've done this wrong. Now, what can I do about it? Go back to the points which I had uh, given. Somewhere or the other, you will get some answers to it. Okay. Namu says, whenever I consider writing it down, I have a difficult time getting started. Why is that happening? 
but it's difficult for me to write. How will I take that first step? Do you have anybody whom you can trust and use as a partner? Maybe both of you can you know, help each other. So when you have some uh, you know, introspection to do, tell the other person to sit with you and you tell that person, this is what I'm doing. And let that person write it down. And then show it to you that this is what has happened. These are the things, you know, what you did intentionally, what you did unintentionally, you have that. Maybe you can reciprocate by telling him or her that <coughs> what you want to uh, sort out, you tell me, I will help you with uh, that. Gauri says, what do you uh, do when a person, uh, person's thought, think negative, act about his co companion, though it wasn't? Do you clarify him or keep uh, quiet? Time will reveal the uh, truth. Very individual, Gauri. Um, I don't want to give a very generalized statement without knowing what the specific thing is. But if there is even a slight chance that it can make matters worse, I would recommend that you be conservative. Don't be in a um, uh, hurry to clarify things. Focus more on clarifying in your own mind where you are feeling more comfortable with yourself, where you are feeling more at peace with yourself. That is more important than how, what you resolve with other uh, people. Shubha says, I feel guilty for not doing enough for my dad who is no more. Yes, Shubha and all of you. This is something that we have to keep in mind. Sometimes when we are either bad to somebody or we are not even bad, but we don't do enough. Because at that time, it looks as though, yeah, yeah, I'll do it later. I will do this, but it doesn't happen. And when the person is no more, then we start having regrets. We have to work on this guilt, as I had uh, uh, says. We have to take these uh, things. Like how Divya says, many times I feel very hard as I'm not able to take care of my parents and they were caring me so much. And now my father is no more so feel guilty and sometimes very tough when I think I feel I did not take care of my responsibility. It is an endless thing, Divya. So many times we have these regrets because we set a high benchmark, because we love those people so much. And then we have all these regrets. But I don't think so. I think if there was some way by which you could, you know, dial your parents wherever they are and ask them, I don't think they would be so harsh on you as you are being on yourself. So do try to rationalize. Yes, you had other responsibilities. Your parents were not the only one. You Maybe you had your own family, whatever it is. If it says that today's topic made me cry. Yes, this shows your sensitivity. Ifat. It shows that you are a person who cares. And that's a very, very good sign, even though it hurts, even though sometimes these sort of conversations become a little unpleasant for you. It's really worth the uh, thing. Vicky says, one question, does a human mind evolve as you age? Example, I'm not the person when I was 10 years or five years ago. Why do men mature uh, late? No, it, it does happen by a few years because of certain upbringing, because of certain factors, which I won't go into the detail now. Generally, girls tend to become a little more mature faster than uh, boys in general, but not all girls are more mature than boys or anything. And does a human mind evolve as you age? Yes, it definitely does. And it continues. It's not just when you know, you're 10 or 20 or 30 years old, even at 80, 90, your mind can continue evolving if you are working in that direction. And today's uh, session is part of that thing to make my mind evolve. I do a lot of introspection. I do a lot of understanding to see where I am and what I am, uh, you know, achieving. Roshan says, as a thoroughly pampered child, I was always answering back to my quiet understanding mother. After doing this, I'm not regretting it, but getting it back from my grown-up daughter. Any wrong done, one gets it back in this lifetime from the universe. But the fact remains that am I feeling guilty about it or no? Am I resolving it? Yes, you may not be able to control even what your daughter does or your partner does or anybody does, but you do have control over yourself. And that is what I want you to you know, um, understand. Kanupriya says, thank you for choosing this topic. It was really thought provoking. That's the whole intention, you know, that each of these topics, every Saturday when I bring this up, my whole intention is somewhere along the line, if you could spend this half an hour, one hour every week to take a pause in your regular routine and think 
in a different direction to see what I can do, what I am doing, where am I uh, headed. If I can do that much, no, life can become very significantly uh, different. And what has happened has happened. What we need to do is to take things in my control today and move on. Vicky says, my brother is in a much better place financially and I had challenges and I'm not there yet. And I'm compared and put in a guilt position. One thing I'd like to tell Vicky and all of you is nobody can make you feel guilty. Think. Guilt comes from within. People can point fingers at you. People can put you down. People can say very nasty things to you. But whether to take responsibility and say that I really did something uh, bad. I am a bad person. I did bad uh, things. That is where the guilt comes, right? That is directly in your uh, uh, control. Including the fact that even if I have done bad things, I am not necessarily a bad person. There's a difference. Good people also do bad things. Bad people also do good things, isn't it? So even if I have done certain things, which are very, very obviously in my own mind, they are bad. It is number one. It's in my uh, control whether to feel guilty or not or to overcome that guilt and equally important to move up in life. Sunita says that for every small thing I tend to blame myself. Now is the time Sunita to overcome that. To start thinking a little more rationally. To be a little more compassionate with yourself. To tell yourself that I cannot be a perfect person. I am a human being. I am not a demigod or an angel or somebody perfect. So I will allow myself with these uh, mistakes. Nalini says, Ali, you remember I wanted to work on this area long back. I am joining the uh, webinar. Thank you for choosing this topic. We can help so many young. So very true, Nalini. Once you, we become aware of these things, once we work on it for ourselves, automatically it becomes so easy for us to help others, to reach out here and uh, there, you know. All these type of uh, things. Hindu says, yes, Nalini, we did discuss about pre-marriage uh, sessions. It's a continuous uh, thing. As uh, uh, Sonal also mentioned to you, there are a lot of people who are wondering where we have landed up, what we have done, why is it that I did it this way, why could not this have been done. Day in and day out, we are coming out with you know, people who are regretting, who are feeling guilty, who are feeling that this is not the right thing, I should not have done this, I should not have done the, uh, that. All these things are uh, going on. In fact, as I mentioned uh, to you, even uh, Anis is here uh, with us today to get this uh, webinar organized. Anis said that youngsters in her family are even asking this basic question that do I need to get married? Why do young people ask these questions? Because what they are seeing around them, left, right and center, is a lot of negativity about marriage. They're very rarely coming across people who are exhibiting harmony, peace, love, joy, which is what marriage is supposed to be. So when they see that, they say, I am an educated person. I stand on my own feet. I'm complete by myself. I can do whatever I want to do. Why should I get married? Now, I am not saying everybody has to get married. Yes, there are a lot of people I know who have chosen to remain single and who have had wonderful lives. But it should not be on a negative note, no? It should not be that, no, all marriages are bad, nothing happens, it's just one compromise. It should be a choice that somebody uh, takes, right? Shobha says, my daughter is studying abroad and she wants me to call once in a day. And if I miss it, she blames me as I am bad mother and feel guilty. You have to be assertive, Shobha. It is your life. You have taken the trouble of not only giving birth, bringing up, making the child so capable that today she can go and live in a foreign country and make a future for herself. 
never forget that that has been your contribution to her life. And you are still contributing to it by calling her up frequently. In fact, you set a pattern now by saying that do not expect a call every day from me. There are days when I'm going to miss out. There are days when I will not be in the proper frame of mind or mood. You have to accept it. For sometimes she will crib. She will make those accusations. She'll say, you don't love me. You don't care for me. Very soon she'll say, no. People learn to respect those who are assertive. <laughs> Vicky says, sorry about so many questions. Does it matter uh, uh, in achieving our making certain amount of money at a given date or to get married? Why I'm India? Why she is such a big bloody deal? This uh, taunting of age makes you so. That's what I am, uh, uh, you know, continuously saying, Vicky. That it is up to us to respond to others. There are always people around who will keep saying certain uh, uh, things. It doesn't matter. I have to understand. Okay. Surekha has a very good question. How can we help someone feel complete? Self-esteem. It is primarily self-esteem, self-worth, whatever you call it. When a person feels that I am capable. And these are the things. Today's topic, for example, is regrets and guilt. Prevents a person from feeling uh, you know, uh, uh, complete. And that is where not only we can work on ourselves, we can help uh, um, others also. Namu says, thank you very much for your suggestion. However, I do not believe I have a good uh, friend or a person with whom I'm comfortable seeking their assistance in writing out. If I have to do it on my own, please uh, advise. Maybe you can dictate into. Nowadays, all of us have smartphones where you can dictate and the phone types it out uh, uh, for you. It's as easy as that. So somewhere along the line, or learn to start off with writing in just you know, bullet points, one word which, uh, you know, conveys that. Start with that. Over a period of time, you will be able to build on that. Ranjita says, coincidentally, I watched minimalism documentary last night. It made me think how important not only to declutter our home, but also our mind. Let go of all the regrets. One does not need much to live and be content and happy. Living simple is the wisdom to true joy, happiness, and contentment. Yes, this is a fascinating topic by itself, Ranjita, and all you others. Minimalism. I think even this COVID and these lockdowns should have taught us this lesson of how we should move towards minimalism. A marriage, for example, since we are talking about marriage uh, this week, a marriage with 50 guests can be as fulfilling, as joyous, as memorable as a marriage with 5,000 guests. It's up to you. 50 good people who genuinely care for you and who are there for you can make that occasion you know, so memorable and so happy for uh, uh, you that you don't need anybody else. The same thing with anything, physical uh, uh, things, how big a house you need or how big a car you need or how many gadgets you uh, need. Now, all these things are interconnected to uh, each other. If I learn to first push away my uh, you know, negative past, resolve it. Push away doesn't mean just ignoring it. Resolve all these things like regrets and all that. Learn, as I'm going to uh, talk about next uh, Saturday, learn whom to trust and whom not to trust because we always work on that. At the same time, the points that I gave you, which Sonal has highlighted again right now, the points to heal from the guilt of the past. If I do all those uh, uh, things, I can start off by living a better quality of life one day at a uh, time. Just start off with working on it one day at a time and you will succeed. So I end up with what I had told you in the beginning. Have a wonderful festival. Have a nice auspicious day. Have a nice uh, lockdown weekend for those of you who are in Karnataka. And let us hope that we move on to better things in life. Thank you and bye-bye.